Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, are you ready? Praise God. We are still on the topic, the blessings of Abraham. And I told you yesterday, we're still trying to, there's something I'm, that's in my spirit to share with you. But it's, it's as though several things are, uh, we need to set the ground clear. Praise God. All right, let's, let's trust the Lord to help us today praise god can we call for that daily bread are you ready release your faith right now and say with me say father i declare and i demand for my daily bread it's coming to me now in jesus name amen praise god oh thank you lord jesus glory be to god mm. <laughs> Praise God. You know, I remember I was sharing with you yesterday on um, uh, the grace ministry and the grace minister. Now, I told us to look at Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. Galatians 3 and verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. The reason Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, the reason Christ became a curse for us is so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, Christ, I read this scripture to, to, to you um, from Matthew last week where we were looking at the different generations because of what God said to Abraham that you must keep this in all your, 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 with your children and in all their generations and God was referring to in all generations this must be kept he was talking about the covenant that he had with Abraham so he says this thing must be kept in every generation very important praise god now then so he says here that christ redeemed us from the cause of the law so he became a cause for us now yesterday i was talking about you know people who say they are grace ministers and i was beginning to show you where they run into troubles not because uh, those things are really difficult to crack. It's because they, be, they have become rigid in their thinking, so they get stuck. Listen, we are led by the Spirit of God. And everything we do, everything we teach, must be from the Spirit of God. And one who's not understood the mind of God, one who's not understood what God is doing will find himself in that place where he is stuck. Not following the Lord, but following his own precepts. Please take note of that. If you're called to ministry, be careful when you stop following the Lord and start following your own precepts. Things you have established for yourself. It can be doctrine that you have established for yourself. Rather, everything that opens up to you, you take it to the Spirit of God. This is why we fast and pray. You remember Daniel? Daniel read the book of Jeremiah and he saw a prophecy written there. He went and he began to fast and pray. And he fasted for 21 days. What was he asking God for? Lord, this thing, I believe you spoke to Jeremiah. But what's the truth about this now? That was his prayer point. And he fasted for 21 days because of that. Have you fasted for 24 hours? Or have you fasted for one day? I mean, six to six, because he did not understand the scripture. How hungry are you for truth? We only fast for power. Ah, if you want power, how many of us have fasted for truth? How many of us has, have cried before the Lord because we want to know truth? So you don't walk in a lie. 
You know, I always, I always say this to believers. You don't want to wake up one day in your life and realize you have made decisions, permanent decisions that are not based on truth. You don't want to do that. I remember I was teaching in our fellowship one day and I said, hey, imagine as a young man, you were interested in this lady. You loved her. You loved her spirit. Maybe you were in school together. And you know this person. She's godly. She fears the Lord. But then you, your denomination does not um, permit ladies to wear trousers. And they have all their good reasons. And sometimes quote scriptures for that. And that's an example. And now, here's this brother. He knows this girl. He knows her spirit. He, he's interacted with her all the days in his school days. You, you understand what I'm saying? And he loves this girl. He feels in his heart, God wants him to marry this person. But then he did not have the boldness to stand, to defend. Because he talked about it like, um, can you stop wearing trousers? He said, no, why? He said, um, you know, you have to be careful with these things. No, 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 no. And now that, that alone, because he, he, he has shown it to her thinking, she might change. Then he can say, oh, I'm going to see my parents, please. They don't like you wearing trousers. Now, because of that, he, he does not summon the boldness to say, you know what? This is my intention towards you. And I won't take it to my parents. He doesn't have it. So he lets that relationship go. And then eventually goes to marry the one that fits into that frame. And now he's married, not so happy, patching life. And then after some years, that parent church, the pastor comes up and says, Hey, you know, we've not really been working in the truth concerning this whole why do our women not wear trousers? That's not really what the Bible says. This is the truth about it. And so, so women, just be moderate, just be modest. But I mean, nothing stops you from wearing trousers. How would you feel? You're already married. You're not happy. The other sister is married, maybe happy or not. And you see that person and realize that I made a permanent decision based on something that is not truth. You see that? Why? Because you were thought wrong. People have made mistakes like that in life. Not because the truth was not available, but they refused to search the scriptures. Number one. Number two, they didn't take that matter to the Holy Spirit. What was that brother supposed to do? If you believe in your heart, because we face these situations every day where we are confronted with the knowledge that we have and the reality on ground. So you're confronted with that kind of a situation, brother. You love the sister, but then her, uh, your doctrine doesn't support her own. The first thing you need to know is who is this person? Not just because she's fine. You know her. She's godly. She speaks the word of God. She speaks the mind of God. But they just have a problem with that one thing that your church does not allow. And this one thing has nothing to do with deep spirituality. It just has to do with appearance. What are you supposed to do? Go before the Lord. You see, because when you are held bound by traditions like that, you take the matter before the Lord. Now, because you were raised up in that, it's natural and it's right for you to subject yourself to such. But when you as a person is confronted with your destiny, what do you do? It doesn't matter how much you have been taught. First, take the matter to the Lord. That should give you some reason to fast and pray. So Lord, I'm feeling this for this person. Or I want to go into business with this person. Or I want to go into relationship with this person. But here is the challenge. This is what we have been taught. And, and, and this person is like this. 
Lord, what do you say about this? What are you looking for? Truths. Laws have kept us bound. Because those laws many times does not fully express the mind of God. Now, this is what has happened to a lot of people. And, and this is exactly what Paul was dealing with. Then many people took it to say, throw all the laws away. No, he was dealing with situations like this. So someone who finds this out starts disdaining the church. Can you imagine what my church cost me? They cost me the love of my life. The person I would have married and I knew I would have had joy. Don't blame them. Blame you. They were doing everything they know to bring you up right. They were doing everything they know to put you in the right. You understand what I'm saying? But everything they know may not be right. So you, life, has a way of bringing you to the place of truth. But when you are confronted with it, what do you do? What do you do? This one, studying alone may not help. Because you see, if you study and you find the truth, you may not have the authority to walk in it. Ah, Kalabashat, If your church says, I want you to listen, because this, this is affecting a lot of believers. You belong to a church, and they say in that church, nobody should wear trousers, for example. Now you go and join some other believers somewhere, and then they open your eyes to truth. Then you start becoming rebellious. Say, me? Anything they do, let them do. I will wear my trousers. Now, you are becoming rebellious, and that's wrong. And you might be judged by God for that. Not because you wore trousers, but because you were rebellious. So rebellious becomes a sin of the heart. So you see, to you, I only wore trousers. But to God, he says rebellion. Hey, but what, what should I do when I've seen the truth? How did you get the truth? You may get the truth, but you don't have the authority to function in it in that aspect. And what are you talking about? Yeah. And this affects a lot of Christians. This is why a lot of people have not married. This is why a lot of people have, are married. They cannot have children. They don't realize that it's a judgment against them for a certain rebellion. So what am I supposed to do? Yes, I met people, I saw their liberty in Christ, and I was chilled by it. So I joined them, and they are okay with wearing trousers. So fine, you want to join them? Go tell, if you're still under your parents, you go tell your parents, oh, daddy, mommy, I, I think I've seen where I want to go. But of course, before you even do that, go pray about it. Lord, are these people okay? I want to be sure. And the Lord gives you the go ahead. And then you go to now. You need him to grant you favor before your parents. If you're still under your parents. And then your parents say, well, anything you want to do, you do. Oh, praise God. And then you go ahead. But then to say, and sometimes God says, no, don't. Stay there. And I say, ah, if I'm staying here, hmm. They, I will show them. Because like, like nobody can keep me under this bondage. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. If you want to do that, you've got to first of all pray and ask the mind of God concerning. Say, Lord, we've been under bondage. How come we were believing this thing for this long? Then the Lord himself will begin to talk to you about it. Now listen to me. The moment God starts talking to you about it, he is releasing on you the authority to take that action. Because right now, when you begin to take that action by the things the Lord has taught you, men will now see you as rebellious, but God sees you as obedient. Are you seeing the difference? 
So there will be no judgment on you because you are now following the teaching of the Lord. So what has happened? You dislinked yourself from the authority of that church or that pastor onto the authority of the Lord himself. Now, who's going to be the judge? God, right? But then he's the one that you're following. Can you see the wisdom in that? So, so these, things, these things we do without realizing the repercussions. Every action of ours, you must, you see, you know, remember the disciples one time, they asked, by which, they asked Jesus, by which authority do you do what you're doing? See that now? Because they want to know, and that's how life is. By which authority? Be careful not to walk in rebellion. Be careful to receive your authority in God. So now, because of... Now, now, first of all, let's talk about why the laws came in the first place. You will see it in Galatians chapter 3. Now, let's, let's go here. Verse 19. Verse 19. Now, remember... Okay, let's read verse 19. It says, What purpose then does the law serve? What's the purpose of the law? It says, It was added because of transgression. Mm -hmm. So the law wasn't there before. Life was existing. The promise was given. There was a covenant. Yeah. The covenant is not a law. Understand? The covenant is an agreement. Now to strengthen that covenant, laws were now given. But then, you take away the law, you still have the covenant. The question then is, why introduce the law? Here's what it says. It was added because of transgressions. So, we made a covenant. My people are failing to keep the covenant. So what do I do? I said, okay, from now on, anybody who doesn't do this at this time will face this repercussion. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to get my people to obey the covenants so that the blessing will flow. You see that now? Because if you don't obey the covenant, God will be restricted. That's the truth. You remember in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 13, God spoke about them. He says, I put before you life and death, blessing and cursing. He said, choose life so that you and your children will live. Now, God actually said, I think in verse 14 and 15, God said that, look, if you don't love the Lord, if you don't obey the Lord, if you don't keep his commandment, you will not inherit. Now, ha, huh, hold on. God has already promised. Now, is God giving condition? Every promise has a purpose. The purpose was not just for them to enter that land. The purpose for them to fulfill God's purpose in that land. Now, if their actions are now showing that they will not fulfill the purpose of entering that land, then what use is it getting them into that land? Are you seeing the idea? So, God made a covenant with Abraham. And then because God wanted the children of Israel to keep that covenant, the law was introduced. Now, the Bible said, watch this. What purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of translation. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was appointed through angels by the hand of a mediator. Hold on. So the law was added because of transgression. What transgression? They were not keeping the covenant. So God saw they were transgressing the covenant. So he said, look, let us put a law to remind these people that there are consequences, all because God wanted to bless them. And he says, this is going to be there until the seed comes. And the Bible lets us know that the seed is Christ. Now, what is going to happen when Christ comes that will make the law no more effective? 
what is going to happen. He didn't say when Christ comes, the covenant will no more be effective. No, the law will no longer be effective. Why? Because by the coming of Christ, the Spirit of God is going to be released. And that Spirit being in us will make us naturally keep the covenant. Our time is up. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you today. Thank you. Your truth fills our hearts. And as our eyes are open to these things, we walk in the truth and in the light of the world. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.